you notice how when he finally starts cultivating this idea of maybe there is some so so like in terms of like all of this being circumstantial yeah he does sort of like by accident uh get to become a hero he does have like an initial that positive uh, response to palatine but uh mm -hmm. just being in the car you know you don't uh, it, it, it could be simply because like the the viewer knows this, but travis doesn't or it could just be like purely you know subjective uh through through his point of view where you, you definitely do get the sense that palatine is a kind of um slimy sort of a character right a very kind of like maybe typical politician he reminds yeah. me in fact like when you when you do see him give his little speeches and his commentary uh a lot of the verbiage right uh is very similar to uh, i'm not sure laura if you've ever seen the film nashville but in nashville no. it, it starts with like uh, a sort of like political you know announcement through this car right i forget the name of the guy who, who's running but He's also pretty nondescript in his politics. He's kind of like a mirror where you could put whatever ideology that you want uh, uh, on, you know, uh, on these people. Though, like back there, it's kind of like from the perspective of, you know, Southern. This is this is New York City, so this has kind of like more of a liberal veneer. But you definitely get the sense that Palatine is a little bit slimy and uh although like he's not you know he, you know he doesn't deserve assassination there's this odd thing that happens in the movie where you feel a, a bit more on travis's side than you do mm -hmm. on palatine's <laughs> side right? I, I think i think as well with that like it's interesting to me and like the whole like scene in the car where travis is praising him is that like it kind of was nearly in contrast to the earlier scenes you see at the headquarters where betsy and um I, I forget his name, the guy that she kind of has a flirtatious thing, her co-worker. Oh, going um, on with. Albert, Albert, okay, Albert Al Brooks. But you know yeah. his real name was Albert Einstein? Did you know that? <laughs> no. Was it? It well, is, um, yeah, Albert uh -huh. Brooks is real name, yeah. yeah. It's kind of like, they're like talking about supporting him, but in this nearly like sarcastic kind of way, like this kind of like, oh, you know, like, he does that whole exchange between like oh you sound like you're selling what was it selling mouthwash or something like that and it's mm. nearly like the advertising and they're kind of like laughing about it and it's all very like it, it's that typical like political cynicism and kind of like oh mm -hmm. you know like they're on a side compared but like when you compare it then to the earnestness that travis talks about palatine it's like like either positive or negative he shows a lot more energy and just yeah. er and like misguided sort of earnestness and passion towards whatever as he sets his mind to then yeah. these people do like then the yeah. his, like head, mm -hmm. then his actual campaign workers do and it's just i think it's just, just something that's a very telling moment about travis mm -hmm. well he goes up to her if you notice how he he asks her out he's he's really kind of invasive he's like i can see you're not a happy person yeah. and it's just sort of like she takes to it probably because she finds him attractive which de niro was yeah. And, and you're just like, it's just so odd because it, he's, he doesn't even know her. And he's just like, I can see. And then, he, and then they go out and he goes, that guy you work with, I don't like him. Not that I don't like him. He's just silly. And it's just so he's already showing jealousy. And so like right there, you do see some red flags that, that I'd be like, oh, I don't know about this guy. Mm -hmm. But but, know, but, but, so I, I, but oddly not enough, uh, do, do you think that he's necessarily wrong with some of the kind of, you know, out of the blue, you know, no, assessments? No, I don't, I don't I, think, I think wrong. that's interesting. Like from her yeah, perspective. Yeah, I think like it was really well done because like what he says like isn't wrong. And like he's probably at least fairly on the money with some of the stuff about her being unhappy mm -hmm. and you know maybe she's kind of Lonely looking to make or this guy jealous yeah. or whatever but like at the same time it's he's not saying it due to any actual insight into her he's saying out of pure projection and wishful thinking like yeah, it's yeah, just yeah. it just so it's happens that this is such a accent, common yeah. state for people in general well, that he manages to be right because of how predictable most people well, are he's gonna not, be in this situation he's like. not wrong but he's also probably not in the place right then to say it he doesn't even know yeah, exactly her. so it's like it's like yeah. a little soon to tell someone all that so that's what i mean he's it's so like, he's so he forward. doesn't know her he doesn't know her. Yeah. he's kind of nearly like just shooting this out there because he wants this to be true and he just so ha he just happens to be right and i think as well like just by you like rob like de niro playing him it's just like i do think it was a very good choice to have him being played by like somebody you know like robert de niro was very handsome at the time it's like it was a good choice to have him played by someone good looking because i think it really highlights yeah. just how like weird and invasive and just odd his mannerisms and the way his way of talking are not like not just on the date but he, you get the yeah. sense he just comes out as a bit off to people in general like well, when he's talking he, to the guy getting the yeah. job and it's just it really highlights that whereas i feel like if you had him played by a guy who's a little bit more like you know plain looking or greasy looking or whatever like i feel like that wouldn't highlight his oddness as much as it does because you'd expect it you'd expect oh he's just a weirdo yeah. yeah 
this guy, yeah. he, I mean, he's a, he's better looking than Albert Brooks, at least I think so. And, uh, you know, but yeah, he's weird. And then, and then he takes her out and he, he, he's like, you know, I don't know much about movies. I don't know much about music. I don't know what his stance on welfare is, but I'm sure it's a good one. He doesn't know anything. It's like, he's just lived yeah. in this bubble. And he's like, he honestly thinks taking a woman on a first date to a porn film is normal. He just doesn't even occur to him. And he's honest, he's doing it out of earnestness. He really is trying. Yeah. And like, I got like, the I got the impression with it as well. It's like it was a Swedish porno film. So it's like he probably you get the you could imagine him thinking that it's classy because it's yeah, not just yeah, any yeah. porno. It's a foreign porno. There's, there's, there's like an arciness. Yeah, there's exactly. An yeah. It. It's like that that's just like you could really <laughs> imagine that being his thought process. Like and, and, and notice, he's, and notice he says, uh, you know, don't worry about it. A lot of couples go to movies like this. And when he sits down, there's a black couple in front. Yeah. And they're straight up, you know, they, see, they seem to be together. Like, they are <laughs> honestly there to enjoy the movie, right? Um, so he's yeah. also technically, like, this is a weird part, he's right? Not he's wrong. technically not wrong about some yeah. of these things that he does. Um, and, and, and notice how, like, during this, uh, uh, so during this, like, second date, uh first you just feel kind of like you know like very bad for him that he thinks that all of this is normal that this is appropriate then it starts getting you know more creepy when he's grabbing at her and then of course yeah. like the character is sort of taken uh to the brink of being totally you know uh you lose sort of like all empathy with him when he like shows up to her work starts screaming starts you know kind of like going mm -hmm. nuts but but a as soon as we're sort of taken to the brink immediately after we get that scene uh with the character in the back of the cab who's played by uh scorsese um um, and mm -hmm. and th and this guy's actually you know totally you know insane. He's talking about killing his wife, right? He's talking about it in very graphic detail because she's cheating on him. And, and of course, yet again, it's with a black person, right? Mm -hmm. So there's another there's that racial element comes back again. And as he's being told in graphic detail how how this guy wants to kill his wife, um, a big which I quote of, in the review. I quoted in my review, by the way. Yeah. So. <laughs> so, 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 and Travis Bickle is just sort of a staring at him, and, and and we definitely definitely get the sense that Bickle knows that what this guy is saying is bad and wrong, right? And and although you know Bickle could you know confront a woman and sort of go nuts, maybe grab at her arm, he's not going to behave in this kind of way. So yeah. that that empathy for the character is immediately reestablished just by you know putting him next to someone that is actually you know insane, that is one of these sort of um you know classic New York City characters that mm -hmm. might very well be just something coming up from his own imagination, right? That mm -hmm. bringing again that racial element into it could very well be. You you know, he's sort of imagining some of these things. And you notice how later on, uh, soon after, there's another scene where he's just driving uh, maybe in Harlem or whatever, and a bunch of black kids throw rocks and eggs at his car. And uh, it seems as soon as he brings the car in, although they broke the windshield, you don't see any broken glass. Uh, you don't see, uh, you, you know, again, there's plausible deniability. Maybe he cleaned it up. Maybe this is like a week later. But still, there's enough evidence there that you could say this is, you know, there is something dreamlike going on here. The These are, the, you know, these like black children are kind of like these little, you know, these little like uh, monsters of his imagination. You know, they're very nondescript. You don't see their faces. They're just dark. You know, this is just kind of like mm -hmm. a representation of some of these fears. Um, you know, I just saw like so many more details like this uh, this time around. Just, mm -hmm. I feel like if you take yeah. like any sort of like lens that people typically use to view the film from, you'll you'll accumulate if you like focus on, on those things as you do a rewatch. You'll accumulate more and more pieces of evidence um, in that particular direction. So it's very well crafted in that regard. Well, you know, one of the things I also find really amazing is how honestly really relatable Travis is despite the fact that he's going crazy and he's this yeah. cab driver and he's alone. I mean, I watch it and I actually feel sorry for him. Like I feel empathy mm. for him. I mean, he's he's not a psychopath. He's just lonely. He's so lonely, he's losing his mind. I mean, that's really what it is, I think. And um he just doesn't know he wants to he's like i want to do something but i don't know what it is and he wants to help or make a difference he, and again from his perspective what he considers good is a matter of perspective good or evil remember because he thinks that maybe in that moment assassinating palestine palentine that he's doing a good thing you know even though technically you know you're committing a crime and you're taking away someone's life so we would say no that's not a good thing but um you know, uh, clearly at the end with the shootout, he thinks he's doing um, a good thing. And then society also agrees with that. Oh, he yeah. did a good thing. So again, good and evil being a matter of perspective. And I've noted that in another film uh, review I wrote, which maybe we'll talk about later in the show that's unrelated, but about 
the perspective of good and evil and what is good, what is not, depending on who you ask, can really vary, you know? I yeah. think um, just what you said of him not being a psychopath, like I re I reread Dan's on Cosmoetica, like review of Taxi Driver. And he kind of he, he kind of makes an argument regarding that Travis being like usually labeled as psychotic or a psychopath that he if you're going to kind of diagnose him with anything, he fits more so like borderline personality disorder, something along those lines. And like, I do think there's definitely an argument to be made for that because of the fact that like that's kind of fundamentally a disorder of one's sense of self and personality and then like all the like emotional issues that come along with that so and like I think that that if anything definitely describes Travis he has no he seems to have no actual concrete sense of who he is in the world and Mm -hmm. and he just kind of and like so many of like his plight so much of his plight just stems from that really like even when you see like the letter he writes to his parents even and, and you kind of wonder okay well what's his you know what's his family like and you know you'd nearly be sort of I, I suppose primed to think well is there any clues as to why he is the way he is but then instead you just kind of are bombarded by this like these delusions that he sort of feeds them or he sort of is just using them to try and like bolster himself up or maybe lying Mm. or you know lying to them to try and like protect them from the reality of what is going on you don't know but like I just think it was a very wise decision on in regard to the screenplay to not like really clue us on and why is Travis the way he is like you get little bits that can maybe like you can infer like why party is the way is but like it was just a good Mm -hmm. decision not to because it's like he in a fundamental way has seems to have no idea he's just so anomic I've said that word before but he really is and it's just he kind of he just exists in this and he's just kind of drifting along and yeah he just Mm -hmm. um and he's sort of grasping and it's like he has all this energy and nowhere to put it until he find Mm -hmm. until he nearly yeah random grasps and he's so sad he buys he spends his money on guns and and he really, and he lives in this shitty apartment and you just don't see any way out for him. Yeah. And, and I mean, his life is very different from my life, but I'm not going to lie and say, I don't feel, I've not felt some, I think, relatability to him, you know, mm. just, just the, this, this, you know, I think anyone who's ever felt alone would, would identify with that. And, you know, it, it's sort of like, it's, 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 I mean, not to use the cliche, our deepest, darkest kind of actions or, you know, you wouldn't do them, but sometimes you just have that bubbling up. And, and, you know, most of us, though, as like Ebert noted in his review, he said, most of us just handle it better. We just know how to manage it. He doesn't. He he seems to have no way of handling it and like no people in his life that could have potentially helped him to handle it mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. because and yeah it's just kind of I, I, I don't know I think like regarding the relatability of it, I think it's like very I, I, I think just it struck me when I was thinking back on it that like it's very applicable and very kind of relatable to it's a very prescient film for one made in made in the 70s to like the 21st century kind of like the level of isolation that you see and like even anyone that's like spent any amount of time online like it's it's nearly like too obvious and trite to like point out that like he nearly comes off as like a prototype for the sort of personality that in- you like the now incel? See on incel. Yeah, yeah exactly yeah. and it's nearly trite but it's true and it's like it, it's kind of like even just the like it's interesting because it's like in the 70s there's this level of alienation and anonymity that was maybe only really apparent in in the midst of such a massive city as New York but nowadays that sort of anonymity is like everyone is like immersed in it now thanks to the internet especially post-covid because like it, like it struck me with the scene with the the character the, the crazy guy talking about his wife played by Martin Scorsese it's like it really in some ways it reminded me of like you know you see on like things like reddit or other sites where people will like confess things you know like you'll have those subreddits where people will have these confessions and some you see the most fucked up things sometimes now whether they're true or not but it's like nearly it, it struck me as like that that's very similar like he's just talking to Travis and he's like he's he's not really looking for a response but he kind of is but like you know and it's just sort of like that it's nearly seems like okay back in the 70s some like guy like just in the back of a taxi saying this nowadays anyone can do that and many people do look for some sort of odd solace or response or whatever just by like they posting put it on online. tiktok exactly exactly know? they put it on tiktok or they put it on anonymous things like reddit or other forums and it's just sort of like it's like the level of loneliness that this film describes is kind of like a fairly mm-hmm. default position for a lot of people nowadays and it's yeah it's just it's a very mm-hmm. interesting film. like what you say about relatability i think is just truer than probably some people would like to admit in that regard now mm-hmm. yeah the the, the uh, screenplay has a has an epigraph uh, i forget uh from uh who but uh it's something along the lines of 
um, instead of considering loneliness as this kind of like exceptional case, we should just assume that it's a general human condition, mm -hmm. right? And that and that's kind of the set of assumptions uh, 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 throughout. 